Ferny Grove State School is located within 8 kilometres from the Gallipoli Barracks. There is over 125 students from Defence families. The school has strongly felt the effects of recent Australian military involvement through the experience of our Defence families. For the past eight years, we have deliberately engaged the whole school community in purposeful student-led ANZAC commemoration services that empower our students to become responsible for continuing the ANZAC tradition. Also by engaging students in learning experiences that reflect our core school value, care and compassion. We aim to help students develop emotional empathy towards those who have died at war and those who continue to live with its debilitating effects. In the weeks leading up to Anzac Day, students took part in a range of age-appropriate and student-led activities, encouraging them to reflect on the meaning of Anzac Day. These activities include exploring the effects of war through the study of poetry. Responding to stimulus material by writing diary entries and letters from a Gallipoli soldier's perspective. Learning the symbolism of wreaths and creating their own. Reading stories such as Simpson's Donkey and Anzac Ted and discussing the characteristics of the Anzacs, as well as writing poetry and creating artwork, medals, slouch hats and poppies for the Anzac service art display. The Anzac Wall of Honour display encourages students to create profiles of past and present service members from their own families. While the Anzac Day Treasure Hunt encouraged students to research and learn about Australia's military history. Students also embraced the challenge of baking Anzac slices for the whole school. With the support of Defence parents, students from each class baked over 900 servings of Anzac slice, which we enjoyed following the Anzac Day service. Students learned about the biscuits' origin, the types of food soldiers ate during World War I, and the difference between Anzac biscuits and Anzac tack. The Anzac Day service this year deliberately focused on the question, does the war ever end? After the battle was over and both sides were back in their trenches, the cries and screams of wounded Australians in no man's land drifted across the battlefield. Don't forget me, Cobber, one man called out. The Australians, exhausted from two days of terrible hand-to-hand -hand fighting, again risked death. This time in search of wounded mates who had sought shelter in muddy craters and ditches of the battlefield. I'd rather be killed than leave them there to die, they hollered aloud. It is this supreme sacrifice that we commemorate today and the ideal of mateship that, that was forged on the battlefield. These brave men and women, young Australians, a whole generation lost but never forgotten, lest we forget. My name is Tom Williams. I'm an ex-combat engineer who joined the Army on the 5th of June 2007 at 18 years old. I'm the sixth generation of my family to have served in the armed forces. I deployed to Afghanistan on Mentoring Task Force 1 in February 2010 as a high researcher of 6RAR's Alpha Company. My job was to search and clear routes in order to counter the Taliban, Taliban's most fearsome weapon, the improvised explosive device, or IED. And also to conduct area searches looking for weapons and munitions that the Taliban would bury to keep hidden from us. I spent the next nine months in the desert and valleys of Afghanistan learning what it meant to uphold the Anzac tradition. The fighting season in 2010 would be the worst our conventional forces had seen since the Vietnam War. In a space of three months, Australia would double its list of casualties from nine deaths in nine years to 20 in 10 years. This period tested every single member of our battle group. We had to find a way to grieve for the brothers we had lost, yet find the strength and courage to put our gear back on, put ourselves back in harm's way and continue the mission the very next day. It was with great pride that through this extremely difficult time, I got to see the spirit of the Anzac shine through. After nine long months, this experience was over, but the real journey for many of us was only just beginning. Personally, my world started to unravel fairly quickly after coming home. I found myself on constant high alert and very angry for no good reason. I couldn't connect with anybody that hadn't shared my experience, and I felt very isolated and lonely, especially after I discharged from the army and moved back to my hometown. The more I isolated myself, the worse my condition got. 
In June 2012, after sending my wife back to England with my six-month-old son, I completely broke down and was admitted to the hospital for the first time with my PTSD and depression getting the better of me. Since this time, I've been back to hospital on seven other occasions, ranging from a week to two months' stays. At 24 years old, I was told that due to my health, I was being made totally and permanently incapacitated and I may never work again. Since leaving the army, I've worked extremely hard to keep my life on track. I have a young family and the idea of not enjoying that for all it is worth is not an option for me. But what I've found is that not everyone has that. They don't have that reason, that purpose to move forward and I can tell you even with it, it's hard. Along with some of my brothers in arms, we've come together to create a community of those affected by the war in Afghanistan. Recently, we came together with our families of the fallen to honour and remember their sons and our brothers with our 42 hours for the 42 fallen fundraiser. Since then, we have become not, uh, an official not-for-profit organisation called the 42 for 42. We hope to continue to raise awareness and provide ongoing support to all those soldiers and their families that have been affected by the war in Afghanistan. We will always remember our fallen and today we can also remember and take the opportunity to acknowledge the service and sacrifice of our current and past serving defence members and hope that they find strength and resolve in the support we offer on days like Anzac Day. The sacrifice of our wounded is different, but no less. It is a sad reality that our wounded tend to be forgotten, though they have always vastly outnumbered our dead. I hold my head high for my mates that have not returned from deployment. If I have hold, sorry, I hold my head high for my mates that have returned from deployment with physical and mental injuries. It's not often that we remember not only have we lost soldiers in battle, but so many soldiers are still fighting their own battles today. Although our wars may have come to an end, for those who were wounded and the families who have lost their loved one, it will never end. Anzac Day means to me a day that we solemnly think about all of those men and women who sacrificed their lives for Australia. It breaks my heart to hear the numbers of soldiers that died in war fighting for our country who never made it home. These poor helpless mothers that hear that their sons and fathers have died in war to be never seen walking down the path towards home again. Is something that we young Australians should never forget, thus we forget. As you can see from this morning, we at Fernie Grove truly embrace Anzac Day. We have a huge defence population. We are connected greatly to the community in terms of defence and in terms of serving parents and adults. We at Fernie Grove thank you from the bottom of our heart for our forefathers, and for our serving men and women today's service. This was our first Anzac service at Fernie Grove as we're new to the school. I was really impressed with the way it was run, how it was done, the way the kids were involved and engaged. 
the everything was done with excellence, which is what particularly impressed me. From the music, the speeches, uh, the way kids were involved, uh, it was very engaging for them, which is important. I really love the emphasis on care and compassion in this school, and the way that kids are encouraged to respect our past uh, serving members, but also our present ones as well and the challenges they face today with PTSD. I think it's really great that the kids are made aware of that and they're taught to respect that and encourage support for the future. This year's Anzac Day ceremony was definitely one of the most heartwarming ceremonies I've ever attended. It definitely had a whole lot of heartfelt truths from all of the guest speakers and the Anzac spirit was definitely felt in the hall that day. Shorty's here as a, I'll just give you context. Uh, Shorty has served and served probably in the worst case scenario. Um, he's a friend through, I'm friends with Sean through my wife and he's, our kids are close with his kids and so we made that connection and it's quite ironic that we, that Shorty was in the sixth RAO in Ogre, so he served as an engineer and we'll talk about that later and what that, what his role was, when he, who's got that question about his role, his position, what he did, anyway about that question. And then Sean's going to be pretty open in terms of this question. Yeah, our job was to be out front. So every time you move in Afghanistan, you need a combat engineer, a sapper, which is my role, and he looks for the IEDs on the ground, um, roadside bombs, um, mines, anything. Second month, third month in, we, uh, I personally missed an IED with my number two who was helping me search, and a vehicle got hit. Uh, one wheel went close to 200 metres away. I was in front, um, my number two was actually hit from, with a grill from the vehicle and he was knocked out. Myself, I got, had all the bins and all the debris land on me, so I was actually injured two months in. And from that time on, um, I think I started realising how serious the job was. I came home injured and I felt guilty for coming home because I had to leave my mates there. And unfortunately, when I was uh, a couple of bad incidents happened when I was coming home. I had another couple of friends die, and a couple of very close friends of mine got very uh, badly injured and resulting damage to the legs, and they can't walk and that now. We're all expected to be strong and go and, and able to cope with, especially situations over there with the, the public in Afghanistan, and some of the things that happened there was meant to brush it off and we see the way they handle things and we're like, all right, yep, that's their way of life, that's their way of life. So we're expected to be put that behind us and move forward. And then, and for example, my mate Snowy that died, the next day, and the, actually some of the boys on, who were on that patrol had to go out another hour later, so it's got to be brushed aside. Um, for me, I remember that day pretty vividly and I was just sitting there, I just wanted to sit and say, no, let's, come on boys, let's take this in and next thing you know, we couldn't. Yeah, normality, trying to be normal, trying to be able to have dinner at the right time, trying to just sit, even sit, I couldn't watch TV. Uh, it made me angry just because I didn't get over there and just seen it and it just sort of seemed normal. And I hadn't lived a normal life for seven to eight months. It was very high stress. So, and then even going down to the shops and seeing people happy, enjoying life, and they're, and they're allowed to be, everyone's allowed to be, but it was very hard to take. And it's very hard for a soldier to come home and trying to fit back into what we call a normal life. Yeah, I think around Christmas time recently, yeah, I, um, yeah, I try to take my own life because I don't even know why. Like, it ranges from um, a lot of different motions. It could be from things I thought about it there, or it could be the fact that the guys I know now, how much they're suffering and hurting, and it takes a toll. You get more good days than bad days? Oh, definitely. It used, yeah. I, my good days out and my bad days by a long shot. And that's the re one of the reasons why, and it's something I, um, we do every night at home over the dinner table. We sit there and we talk about what's the best part of your day. We sit there and it's just a coping mechanism I use. It's to try and find what makes you happy about what you've done today. So over the dinner table, um, I sit there and I think about why was today such a good day? We don't ever want to forget what we've done or what we've been part of but it's all right to have a bad day, bad week, be sad, because you're gonna get sad in time in life, it doesn't matter how you look at it, something's gonna upset you, but you gotta learn how to get over that and move forward. 
whether it just be, like I said, an hour, you just upset and then you get up and go again. Could be a day, could be two days, could be a week, but you've got to learn how to get your body and mind right and start moving forward in life because life's pretty special. I felt naive that I did not know that Sean and Tom suffered through post-traumatic stress. I also felt dejected that his very close friend died right in front of him. I learned that we are truly lucky to not have seen what Tom and Sean saw. He spoke of his battle of returning home and the anger he felt, especially seeing other people so happy when he wasn't. When Sean came to talk to us about returning from war, I was really moved by the fact that he was so open and honest about his depression, anxiety, returning from Afghanistan and how it affected his family and himself. I feel like I appreciate soldiers much more than I ever have before and that the war is truly never over for them. In my opinion, the war will never be over. There will still be fathers, mothers, sons, daughters suffering from this terrible tragedy. It surprised me when he said he tried to take his own life at Christmas. It made me feel on that there are still people fighting, not only physically, but mentally. After hearing Sean's story, it shocked me what he told me. I was all dreadfully sad when he told us that his friends died right beside him. Imagine if that was me or you. After hearing his story, I was very shocked by the fact that his best mate was gone and he had to leave him behind and continue fighting. After the visit with Sean, I had a better understanding of the war in Afghanistan. The war, the war is never over for these men.